Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. We're happy that you could join us. This is such a strange and stressful time <laughs> in everyone's lives. With so many unknowns and families yeah. cooped up together, the threat to emotional health is a major concern. And we are referring to your emotional health as well as that of your children. We empathize with your frustration and your worry as you try to hold family together and your work life together. We will do our best to help. We are not doctors, we are not psychologists, but we do know Maple Bear pedagogy and the science that supports it. Our happy message for today is that play is wonderful therapy for all ages. In your pre-pandemic life, you may not have had much time to play with your children. A busy work day with your children spending hours at school or with a caregiver meant less time for family interaction. Your children played at school, yes. They played with the nanny. They played with their grandparents and cousins. They played with friends on play dates. As a busy parent, you tried hard to squeeze in some time for a meal together with your kids, supervise their homework, give them a ride to a practice, and maybe a bedtime story. How things have changed. You and your children are together all day, every day, and now, you have to try to squeeze in time for work. Because families are at home, isolated from normal activities, and spending so much time together, new routines are required for everyone to be emotionally and physically well. We talked about routines in our first tutorial and stressed that play is a vital element of that family routine. Today, we will expand on that. Maple Bear recommends that play for children and for adults should be an essential part of every day, so please play. In his recent Importance of Play report, researcher David Whitebread said this, play in all its rich variety is one of the highest achievements of the human species alongside language, culture, and technology. Indeed, without play, none of these other achievements would be possible. The value of play is increasingly recognized by researchers for adults as well as children, as the evidence mounts of its relationship with intellectual achievement and emotional well being. There it is. Play supports intellectual achievement and emotional well being. To quote a Maple Bear academic support document, for some people, the word play inspires random, pointless, time-wasting activity, chaos and loss of control. <laughs> play is anything but pointless. Play shapes the brain, opens imagination, and invigorates the soul. We need to help parents understand the importance of play, and that is our goal for today. What does this mean for adults? It means that we adults need to understand that play is the primary way that learning happens. It means we need to understand that children learn best when they are engaged in hands-on, minds-on activities and experiences that allow exploration, experimentation, discovery, and personal interactions. Play is how children learn. Play helps them develop brain wiring, connections that help them grow in every way. This explains why Maple Bear's pedagogical foundation in early years is play-based learning. But we want to stress that there's a wider definition of play that informs Maple Bear pedagogy all the way up to high school. So here it is. It is considered play when we are intrinsically motivated to do something. There's no external reward or bribe required. When we find an activity that is enjoyable or satisfying. An activity that allows for some self-direction and choice. Or the activity allows us to be creative and or imaginative. If the activity engages us fully, physically, mentally, or both. Or if we want to voluntarily repeat and practice. That is why we expect and train all Maple Bear teachers to deliver engaging lessons. And that has, that has been what they're trying to do even in this new virtual reality. Activities and projects that are inspiring, 
motivational and satisfying that involve autonomy, creativity, and active learning are fun. And that's why we encourage you to play with your children. They need fun, no matter how young or how old they are. So let's start with early years. If you have a child in Bear Care to IK, you will see that the program identifies multiple domains of learning, social emotional, language, fine motor skills, gross motor, cognitive, the arts, dramatic play, music and movement. The parent handbook is a useful resource, but don't stress about it. You are not required to do all of the activities in every domain every day, but knowing about them allows you to find a variety of options for your child who has a short attention span that is normal at this stage of development. You can find approximately 1 million play activities that address the Maple Bear program domains here. Number one source, your child's teacher. Don't hesitate to ask. The teacher knows what your child enjoyed doing at school and can give you suggestions. The Maple Bear Parent Handbook and the Maple Bear Digital Learning Community have tons of resources. And there's always activities that have been shared with you uh, from other parents or Pinterest. At this age, children can play independently for short periods of time if the conditions are created. You need to be on call, but if you establish the play area close to your work area, you may even be able to get some of your own work done. What are these magical conditions? Well, magical condition number one is to have play materials organized and offer the children choices. At school, we do this through centers, that is areas with boxes of play materials. You can replicate this by separating your child's toys and materials available at home into bo boxes and baskets. So if you box up, box up the blocks or put the costumes in a box, or all the puzzles together, or all the toy animals together, then give your child a couple of choices, not everything at once. Remember, sometimes the best fun is simply dumping out the toys out of the box and then putting them back in the box repeatedly. Don't forget to have your child put away the materials or help you put them away when you decide or he decides to switch activities. You may want to learn the clean up, clean up song to encourage this. Condition number two, a parent or an older sibling models an activity. If you start the play off, your child will join in and imitate. Do something fun, like building a tall tower out of blocks or getting into a cardboard box and pretending it's a car or making a delicious pizza out of Play-Doh. I guarantee your child will want to do the same and even add their own new ideas. Condition number three, a parent or a sibling gives the child a challenge. Young children love a fun challenge such as, hmm, do you think you can make a barn out of blocks or cereal boxes or juice boxes for your toy animals? Do you think you could make a tent using this blanket and your chair? I think your dolls need a bubble bath. Do you think you can do that? Can you match all of mummy's shoes into pairs? They may need a little bit of help to get started. Realistically, some activities will require your full attention and participation. Embrace the fun. <laughs> it's good for your mental health too. Please do these three types of activities as regularly as possible. Okay, number one priority is a regular meeting with your child's Maple Bear school teacher. When the teacher calls in, consider it a friendly family visit. Your child will be warmly greeted and invited to play by joining in songs, movement activities, and guessing games. It will be much more beneficial and fun for your child if you become a classmate and play along. If your child is having trouble settling and paying attention to the screen, there, there's a nice tip that another trainer offered. Make sure that the child has a chair and a snack. Nurturing the affectionate relationship between your child 
and his or her teacher will make the return to school much less stressful. Priority number two, parents read aloud or shared reading. This can be done several times a day. All reading, English or Portuguese, is good reading. Mm -hmm. If you are not confident with English, no worries. There are excellent videos on English read-alouds that you can access. An older sibling can practice their own reading skills by reading to a younger brother or sister. Encourage this. And priority number three, a parent or an older sibling or both invites a shared experience. Let's read together. Let's do some yoga together. Let's feed and groom the dog. Can you show your brother how to play that game? Let's gather up the clothes for laundry. Let's call a friend or grandma. The possibilities are endless. For other activities, you may need to be an active playmate, reading aloud, taking turns in a board game, or joining the make-believe. Make Enjoy it all and watch how creative and clever your child is. In fact, please take videos and photos to share. Your child's teacher will want to record the developmental milestones that will happen as your child learns through play. Don't fret if your toy supply is limited. There are many toys in your home that can inspire play. Your child may have discovered some of these already, so just go with it. Plastic cups, spoons, food containers and lids. Sponges. Socks rolled into a ball. Cardboard or plastic boxes. Our old time favorite, pots and pans. And of course, my favorite, <laughs> bubble wrap. <laughs> Toilet rolls, paper towel rolls. Old cards and magazines. A big bowl of soapy water. A roll of tape or masking tape. A small notebook with a pencil tucked inside. An old keyboard. Scraps of fabric, old bed sheets or old clothes. So now let's talk about elementary and middle years children. Your children never grow out of play, nor should they. Many of the suggestions for early years children are great for older children as well. Maple Bear teachers consistently use playful elements in their teaching because this encourages learning. Children who are stressed, lacking confidence, feeling pressured or unsafe, simply cannot learn. Their brains go into survival mode. As parents at home, with children old enough to understand this pandemic crisis, your main responsibility is not to become a teacher, not to spend the day homeschooling. Instead, be reassuring, calm, optimistic, and make sure your ch children have lots of time to play, which will promote cognitive, language, physical, and social emotional learning. As we keep saying, play and learning are intertwined. Believe it. Yes, the virtual classroom meeting with your children's teacher is important. She may assign a task to be done and encourage reading at home. Don't let this become a battleground. If things are difficult, consult the teacher. Help your child attend class regularly and to complete the work to the best of their ability. This will support academic growth and allow for a smooth re-entry into the school. However, you are not expected to fill the rest of the day with worksheets. This will not help anyone. Instead, encourage play. Here are some suggestions. Turn off all screens and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with each child each day. Get down to your child's level, which is often the floor. Don't object to energetic, loud play in fact, join in. Children need to expend pent-up energy, as they do during recess time at school. Get outside as often as possible while respecting the necessary safety restrictions. Let your child teach you a game and be the boss. Take a role in imaginative play. So if your child is pretending to be a doctor, that would make you a patient. Watch and learn as your child teaches you a video game. Repetition of a favorite game or activity is fine. We all learn through repetition. Just go with it. If you do teach a new skill, such as how to volley a ball to your child, demonstrate it a couple of times 
then back off, let the child try, let the child practice. Enjoy creativity, art, music, hobbies. Clear space for practicing dance, martial arts, yoga, Zumba. Facilitate virtual play dates with interactive games. Now, don't feel guilty about finding time to do your work during the day while your children play. Don't feel guilty if you allow your children some screen time. There is lots of excellent content out there. Remember that play is learning and play reduces stress by providing joy and a healthy release of stress. Okay, let's move on to high school students and adults. Hear this, teens and adults need play too. Play offers them the same positive effects on emotional and cognitive health. Of course, high school students have more demanding school responsibilities as they move towards the post-secondary world. Their multiple teachers will be connecting with them regularly to support continued academic progress. Teens are adept at using technology tools <laughs> and, at least in theory, understand their responsibility for doing assignments. But parental support at this troubling time is still important. And one important form of support is to help your teen and yourself by scheduling time for fun. Without healthy recreation, Burnout is a real danger. Assuming that your teens are fully connected with their friends via phones, uh, WhatsApp, messages, FaceTime, and social media, you may have to interrupt that sometimes for a bit of family fun. Here are a few ideas. Again, turn off all screens and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with your teen each day. Help him find the balance between work and play. Cook meals or bake some goodies together. Have a video game challenge or a tournament. Have a board game night. Oh, and my all-time favorite, which I'm very good at, have a karaoke night. Take your dog, take the dog out for a walk. Play with a younger sibling. Jogging, exercise, swimming are all great things. Art, music, dance. Challenge your teen to make a YouTube video. Watch a comedy series together. Ask your teen to choose one. Watch a movie version of a school assigned novel. Encourage community service, volunteerism. Teens and adults need play to support healthy relationships, efficient work, and a positive attitude. Neuroscience tells us that play is good for the brain. It triggers the release of endorphins, the body's natural feel good chemicals, and this promotes an overall sense of well being. We need all the endorphins we can generate. And so, to conclude, let's be optimistic. If there is a silver lining to this new situation, it is that families are spending more time together. To ensure that this reality results in something positive, like stronger parent-child bonds and not increased stress, remember this, play is good for everyone. It not only supports learning, it adds joy to life, it reduces stress, and it brings your family together. We are all going to remember this time of pandemic and social isolation. But as Maple Bear families, let's recognize that we are more fortunate than many. We have the practical and empathetic support of an excellent school, and we have been given permission to be kind to ourselves and to play. We can make joyful memories together. Let's do that. <laughs>